Hi everyone, I'll just do a little impromptu visit to this stately home which is in East Yorkshire. It's called Sledmere House. I've been here a few times in the past but it's a really beautiful place so let's have a look around and see what we can find. Some lovely banana tree there, dahlias. I've got this plant in my garden, Melianthus major, it smells of peanuts. I think that's a bean tree. Is it catalpa or it might be a foxglove tree, which is a different name to that one. There's a summer house, more bananas, and it's uh, lined with apple trees. Look at this, Musa. Beautiful plant. Not hardy in the slightest, so you need to take those in in the winter. We turn around and look at the vista to the top. Now in the olden days this would have been used for vegetable growing, as you can see. Not anymore because the, not many people live in the big house here. And there's a summer house. So it's private between three and five o'clock, I wonder what that means. And there's me, hello. Have a wander around this side now. Oh, this is beautiful. Just look at that. I just love the colours in here. It's oranges and reds and different hues and purples all merged together. And then you've got your reflection pool in the centre, framed by these glorious trees. Giant redwoods, those ones at the back on the left. Let's go and look at the reflection pool, see if we can see anything. I've left my mum somewhere, she's wandered off, but I don't know where she's gone. Ah, look at that, you can see the sky and the trees. and look at this one behind me, it's a really old one, probably made from carved stone I would have thought, or if not it could be a reconstituted stone to look like old stone but it's still beautiful, and the detail on there.
to wander through into this area which is another purple theme and I've got some there's a little robin there, hello I've got some lilies I've got echinacea I've got a purple beach in the middle which clipped to a round shape isn't it beautiful a little yew hedge around the edge a walk down the centre and it's the the beach goes right down the middle and the lovely new growth is this gorgeous colour and there's some old um, architecture there in the centre some seats to sit on or maybe they're more ornamental I think you'd be finding sitting on a lot of bees I'll walk right down the end and see how lovely it is and the wall there with the wisteria. Can you see the wisteria seeds? All setting seed. And now they normally graft wisteria because it takes a long time to flower if you grow it from seed or cuttings. Here we go down. There's another more ornamental copper beech which has been clipped into a different shape here. I love the combination of the U, the purple and the U, and then the shape of the beech trees. There's a fine house there which is not the stately home we're at, it's a smaller one. There's a monkey puzzle tree peeping over the wall wanting to have a look. Oh, so that was a bee just landing on me. Right down to the end. You can see how beautiful it is. And they've got these, I think there's a type of apples down here. Either apples or cherries, look like apples to me. Could be cherry because there's no fruit on them. Can't tell because they've oh no, it's crab apple because they've lost a lot of the leaves and there's a little tiny fruit there. I'll have a wander down here again. You can see how lovely it's looking. we have another border this is quite naturalistic planting and I like this it feels like a hazy meadow obviously you would never see a meadow that looks like this but it's a good impression of one the cat mint there spilling over and you've got some roses there and even though it's just about nearly September if it's not September already there's some asters you've got the these just coming on the scabious are still flowering providing food for the butterflies and you've got these seed heads which look nice there's some lamiums here which I've had in the walled garden at the old manor house these are usually purple or white yeah there's a lot to see and even though it is this time of year it's still really interesting I walk up there because a lot of these old houses they have red doors and benches because it's a real good eye catcher. As you can see, it does draw your eye to it. A little seating area here. A simple bench in a contemporary style with the giant redwoods behind. They're not so giant because they haven't been in this country for that long. A lovely yellow rose there. Not sure what variety this is, but the Victorians loved yellow roses because they were very unusual in those days. There, I'm going to do a little pan round to the, look down there. See where we've come from. You've got the rose arches there, and the ropes, rope swags, and you've got the 
climbing ro roses or rambling roses. And to that side we've got wisteria, which will look lovely in the spring. Uh, and this plant here is called Sanguisorba. And it must be about seven feet tall, which is about two meters nearly. It's full of bees and creatures. Really nice for the back of a border and it's not too heavy. about the eye catcher with the red door here it really is um, something that takes you through the garden and you see it from a long way off so if I was to turn the camera around you'll see another one over there but it's a really nice idea to have something bright if you've got the space of course it's all a matter of taste what colour you would do it but the red really seems to lend itself here There's another red door, which says private, so we won't go in there. And you can see the greenhouses or glass houses there. Some old steps to creep up. Shall we have a look up there? There's a statue. We all need a statue in our gardens. Lovely dahlias in pots. Pyracantha, which is good because it's full of berries, as you can see. The fig tree on the wall. It's easy to get very big, and there's a fig. In this country they don't ripen very well, so you probably don't always get to eat them. Back on this terrace up here, overlooking the walled garden with the vegetable area. Pittosporum there in the back, geraniums. And let's have a look in here. Oh look at these clematis. That's nice. Oh, look, it's a bird of paradise plant there. This is like heaven to me. We've got the little flower bed with plants and things. Now I'm a bit stumped on the names in here because I do perennial plants really. There's a lot of these and un unknown to me. Oh, I do know this is a Tradiscantia. Sansevieria, got a begonia there. Sometimes you can keep those quite a long time. Some grapes, 
got a few bunches on there getting ready. There's a passion flower up the wall. Cheese plant, monstera. Another begonia. There's a lemon tree. Looking a bit bedraggled, but it's still going. Some eoniums there. Uh, there's some forget-me-nots, foxgloves and things. They must be for the bedding schemes and that. And there's some tomatoes, grown as standards. This is absolutely lovely. If we step down into this little bit, can we just turn around and have a look? Uh, that's how a greenhouse should be. Fully functional and being used. And there's some bell crushes there which help warm up the soil for plants in the spring. Palms, castor oil plant, bananas, dahlias everywhere. So here we are in the vegetable garden and as you can see, the lovely old house there, which is an estate cottage where people who work here will live. And it's full of vegetables and herbs, and all sorts of nice things. So a little wander around here and you can see in this urn, there's some mint which smells to me like chocolate mint. You can rub it there and you sniff. Yes, I think that's chocolate mint. And I've forgotten its name, it's a long one, Memphis citrate or something or other. There's a big urn with some um, ponytail plant, amaranthus. And then over there, you can see they've got um, some nets with plant pots on, which to keep the cabbage white butterflies and pigeons from eating everything which looks a bit like a Halloween display but I assure you it's not and in there they plant nasturtiums can you see these plants in the corners and these are um, a decoy plant and hopefully they put these in and the butterflies lay their eggs on those and leave these big cabbages alone and the brassicas and it's all ornamental so it's always made to look pretty there's the greenhouses there, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Trachycarpus fortunii, tearing up there. So I've wandered down to this corner. As you can see, because late in the season, a lot of things are finished, being cleared away, but we still have some vegetables coming. There's some yellow courgettes, tomatoes. Um, I'm not sure what that is. It's a type of potato family. What's that say? I think the squashes have failed, which is meant to go on these canes. Let's have a wander into this little garden. As you can hear the combine harvesters going past, because it's harvest time round here. And there's a little garden here, with some pretty flowers. I like how they've used the brick edging here, well, it's a nice natural countryfied look. And we've got a sweet pea tunnel here. There's the blue colour, the contrasting orange there which works well. Not everyone likes that but I think it looks good. And marigold flocks. I think these are either for a, a cutting beds or they might be used for propagation or stock. And there's a lovely rose and it's I think a second flush. That's Roald Dahl. If you know Roald Dahl, the children's author. BFG. Lovely rose. Let's just see if it smells of anything. You can't smell anything, but often they don't smell very much until the sun comes out, which is the sun's not appearing today. Oh, look at this. Flock, um, cosmos. Lovely cosmos. Sets the scene perfectly. And if you look over there, there's some hydrangeas, and I definitely think this is for cut, cut flowers, this garden. I'm not sure what variety they are, but they look like um, framboise, which is a name of the um, raspberry, or is it strawberry, fraise or framboise in French. Um, it's not a lovely view. Let's look over there. What a nice place to be. And there's some estate workers' cottages at the back. See so if you're a gardener here or someone works here. And you get a living position, that'll be your home, and your bedroom windows will look over this lovely walled garden.
here we have some fruit trees. These are grown into traditional shapes with frameworks around them. We don't see this very often now, but it was all the rage in the olden days. The apple trees are crisscrossed on the wall. As you can see, they've got two stems going up to enable that pattern to happen. It's quite incredible what you can do. Apple trees are growing into these spherical bowl shapes. It's for easy picking. And it gives more interest if you have the time to do it and you can afford to have a frame made. But you could do the same with canes. Some pear trees creeping up this shape here. I'm not sure how successful that one's going to be, but they're still trying. I have some pears in these box frames. You have to be very patient with these. You have to wait a long time for it to happen. As you can see, they are going up and working. Very interesting. A lot of pruning, patience and time needed. And I really love this, Anna. I could just do that in my garden. <laughs> I'd probably have to sell everything to buy it. But it's beautiful. And there's some trees going around there as well, in a shape. Going around the framework. It all makes it decorative, but useful, practical. And you get your fruit and you get the look of the garden too. What an eye catcher that is. As you know I like every space of the garden to be filled and I love what they've done in here because they've used this um, back of the walled garden and between the hedge they've made this woodland garden and they've got hostas, the seeds of the cuckoo pint plant, its name's evading me and they've got ferns, podophyllum is it this one, the big leaves, very nice. Also you've got some persicaria, halibos for the spring. Oh, this looks familiar. I've seen that somewhere before. I think we have one of these at the, two of these at the old manor house, but I'm not sure if that's an original one or a reproduction. Either way, it looks good. We walk under here, down the path, and there's another one. Some berries on this. Maybe this act here, perhaps. Need to brush up on some of these plants. Lovely hydrangea. This is a fairy leafed one. You can see it's furry. It's got a real furry texture like velvet. And the lovely flowers, purple with the occasional little flower to the side. Birch tree for its white stems. More ferns. And the tree. And they've got some ligularias. This uh, Ligularia Desdemona, I think, this one. Favourite of slugs, so not just me who has problems with them. There's a ruin palmate underneath there. Well, that's the name of those, Arum, Arum lilies, Arum maculatum. Lovely berries, but not very good to eat because they'll make you very sick, so don't eat them. There's the more hellebores, lovely. Um, Sambucus, black lace, probably that one. It gets really big. In fact, those stems are just one year's growth from the bottom because you pollard these each year, which means to cut all the stems off and they throw these big new shoots up and create lots of nice fresh foliage. Maybe wander through here. There's a bit of a natural area. Of course, you have an eye catcher there, which is really important. Another urn. I'm glad it's not just me who likes urns. And a little wildflower meadow. And an urn beyond. This is the back of the wall garden. You can see there. Indian bean tree, I think it is. And then more urns. And I think we'll just stop about here. 
I just want to point out there is the ginkgo tree, ginkgo biloba, beautiful palm like leaves. views of the house with the fountain and the lake and the big lawns at the front. It's just absolutely glorious. Can you imagine living here? There is a dividing line here the, the manicured area and the parkland and parkland is where the cattle and deer live and to stop the cattle and deer getting into the gardens or the manicured areas they build these walls now you're not supposed to really know there's a wall there until you come across it and you think oh ha 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 I'm going to fall off the edge and you don't actually see it until you're on it but that is quite a big wall and there's my foot it goes all the way up there in battlements to hold it up and that actually is called a ha ha h a h a because it's supposed to be funny when you discover it by accident not funny if you fall off but it's a good idea and from the house you would not see that so it gives uninterrupted views of the whole landscape mm -hmm. 